So good uh, morning, afternoon, evening uh, to the session on the R in FRNs. We often use FRN as, a, as an acronym like that. Um, and the, the, the uh, discussion so far have focused on, on all sorts of aspects of FRNs. And in, the, in this one, we really want to talk about the research. I'm from the Research Methods Support Project which uh, as part of the, the CTRP program that provides uh, assistance to other projects in the way that uh, research is, is designed and carried out, analyzed and interpreted. And for this session, I'm being helped beside the scenes by my colleague, Carlos Barahona, who is also a member of this project. And I, we've worked with quite a lot of you over the years. Um, and what we want to do here is just, just explore some of the, 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 the aspects of the research, particularly in FRNs. Uh, Carlos, can I have the next slide, please? So the research cycle illustrated there on the left of this slide is very similar when we're doing research within an FRN, research that involves farmers uh, thoroughly in every stage, it's very similar to res the research cycle that we use in other types of research. We start by identifying uh, and understanding the situation and identifying research questions. We then think of uh, an, an approach and a design to use we collect data or observations. We then do some analysis, interpretation, uh, and decide where we are and what to do next. And that cycle it, it, it continues, and that's what researchers really always do. But when we're doing this research in an FRN, involving farmers thoroughly in each one of those steps, then the details of how that works, the details of the processes, the designs, the methods which are going to be used uh, tend to be very different from those that researchers are used to using uh, and particularly different from what they're trained to use. And that many researchers do find challenging. We often hear comments about research with farmers and research done in FRNs. It kind of has problems. It's not really research. Maybe it's not rigorous. Maybe it's not clear. Maybe there's too much variability. And when we're thinking about research with, with farmers and research in FRNs, then we need to acknowledge and understand those differences and figure out what it means for the methods that we're going to use. And a lot of what our project does is working with uh, other uh, FRNs and research teams in trying to figure out answers to those questions. So what we want to do in this session is just look at a few of the things that have come up uh, as we go around that research cycle and the, the experiences and what people involved in FRNs are, are, are thinking about and what they're doing about uh, the, the, the differences, the changes to sort of standard research methods to research that's, that's relevant, practical uh, and valid within uh, the FRN. Now, uh, during this whole um, festival of pharma research networks, there's been lots of making of videos and showing of videos, so we didn't want to be left out. So we tried to make some short videos on this topic. And I recorded interviews with a number of people uh, working with FRNs. They, they're mainly the sort of facilitators and leaders of FRNs. They're not all researchers, but they're all involved in, in facilitating or guiding or leading FRNs. They were all within the Eastern Southern Africa region. We took those, each of those recordings was about an hour or sometimes an hour and a half long. And we took the, the elements from each of them and compiled them into six short videos. Each one is, is uh, about three minutes long. And each of those videos is on a different aspect of research. So what we're going to do is look at two videos and then we have, there are, there are people, I hope, in the meeting who have seen these videos earlier and have prepared some comments on them. And the commentators come from the other two regions. 
The videos are all recorded in Eastern Southern Africa. So the commentators are coming from West Africa and from the Andes region. Uh, and then when we've, uh, when we've heard from the commentators on the first two videos, we'll look at two more videos and then get comments on those. And then the final two videos. Right. The people who are in the videos introduce themselves at the beginning of each video. So you'll see who they are. You'll recognize uh, some of them anyway. Um, we did want to make these videos stand alone. So people that, are, are, that feature in several of the videos introduce themselves in each one. But that's so that these videos make sense if you look at just one of them and not at, not at all of them together. As in the previous uh, session, there's not going to be a lot of time for responding to, to comments and, and questions from uh, all the participants in the room here. I can see that we've got, we've got 120 people here, so we're not going to be able to respond to everything. But do put questions and comments in the chat and we'll try and address them afterwards in some way. And if for any reason, any of these prepared commentators are not able to, to make their intervention in the, in the scheduled slot, for example, they've, they've got an internet problem, then we can use that time to, to have people, uh, other people who are here with us today to make some comments. All right. So I've, um, I've timed this out. If we, if we, if we follow the timing well, then we will finish within the hour. So Carlos, I'd like to get started right away with the first video, which is on what types of research are FRNs doing? Okay, I'm Justin Nganga. I work for an organization called the Recorder. I'm Samuel Gudu. I am the PI of Sogam, Kenya. Uh, my name is Daniel Nyambok. I'm the PI for the FRN NGO project. We are trying to engage farmers in uh, uh, to solve some of the common agricultural problems uh, that uh, exist in this region. And so we, from the start, uh, we have been able to actually look uh, through issues re uh, related to crop production, uh, uh, related to post-harvest crop losses, uh, issues related to soil health, re issues related to pests and diseases. With the FLN, sometimes you find that every time you try to solve a problem, another another research comes up. That, like when we tried to talk about, okay, we want to increase productivity, then farmers now we came up with that maybe our cells are the ones which are which are poor, so we need to do something about it. When you work with the Pharma Research Network, you are gathering a lot of information, but you also discover that there is a, a lot of research that needs to be maybe quantified. The agroecological uh, approach has made me look at life very differently. I've been in the field of agriculture for a long time. But then when I now look at agroecological uh, a, a level of uh, interaction, I realized that we didn't think well when we were going through the original work. We should have realized that even that uh, acid tolerant material is going to go to a farmer which has got so many other dimensions, including their context. And agroecological uh, ways of looking at agriculture is actually the best way, because I realized that even things that you are, we were initially taking for granted could have been the reason why farmers are not doing well. Could have some of them could be the reason why they are not adopting our rights. 
Okay, so there was just some, some short comments on the type of research they're doing. And we'll go straight on to the second video, which is about the sorts of research designs that the FRNs are using. So my name is Nora Asio Ebukalim. I am working with a, a FRN program in Uganda, trying more so to work on uh, issues around the diseases that have affected cassava in the region. Uh, my name is Daniel Nyambo. I'm the PI for the FRN NGO project. And uh, FRN NGO project is about uh, working with farmers uh, in Western Kenya region. Uh, we have been able to actually involve the farmers from problem identification, uh, actual implementation, and then they are looking at the, the result together uh, and also collecting some of the information. We first of all start in a, an informal meeting, the student came and found us already in the garden. So when he came, he sat down with us and we started discussing with him how we wanted the experiment to look like in the field. The farm households that are in that cluster decide where the demonstration should be put. Sometimes instead of a farmer, they decide to hire their own piece of land where they put that demonstration. Actually, the initial stages, we engage 800 farmers across all the six counties. Each farmer were trying out three or four crop varieties. They were offered 11 different sort of varieties. <clears throat> then there were additional two commercial varieties who were performing very well in the in the region. So in total, we had 13 sorghum varieties to choose from. Once you put a demonstration of different varieties in the garden, farmers tend to bring their own varieties because they want to know which of these ones is more susceptible to disease. The farmer also insisted that they wanted also to incorporate uh, some of their crop varieties that they, they thought might be able to compare with the, the ones that uh, we got from the research institution. So these were acted as control. We are actually covering large area. All the, lo uh, the local varieties were not the same. The local var varieties that maybe different farmers were testing could range between eight to 13 or 14. It's becoming more interesting uh, by both research institutions to really work uh, and uh, embrace the FRN uh, idea. Uh, the way researchers worked with us under CCRP is actually to me the way to go. It's going to support pharma groups a lot to understand research. All right, well, there are lots of interesting comments and already I can see some reactions to them in the, in the chat there. Do we have Borgu uh, Swamba online from West Africa? If so, please yes. open your microphone and give us your comments. Yes, I'm here. Oh. Thank please you go ahead. Much. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to speak in French, if possible, because it's, yes, that's and we have the translation. The best. Okay. Um, Merci aux deux présentateurs des vidéos, c'est des vidéos magnifiques. Et euh, mon commentaire va se organiser autour de trois éléments. Le premier, c'est les ressemblances avec ce que nous faisons ici au Burkina Faso et ce qui nous n'avons pas bien perçu, ou en tout cas à moitié, et ce qui nous n'avons pas perçu du tout. Disons que euh, je suis le PI d'un consortium qui travaille sur l'intensification agroécologique et dans un esprit de FRN. Donc, mon commentaire va essayer de voir, faire une comparaison de ce que nous faisons ici et de ce que vous faites. Je suis conscient que c'est juste des extraits. Peut-être que certaines de mes observations n'auraient pas été si j'avais pu vivre toute votre expérience. Mais malheureusement, je suis obligé de me baser sur ce qui est là. Alors, au niveau des ressemblances, 
je vois que nous, vous travaillez avec euh, des... I think we have lost Bogo. We seem to have lost Swanda. Okay, let's let's uh, we'll try to come back to him in a minute. Uh, is Eliseo online? Eliseo, tu turno. Sí, estoy acá. Adelante. So go go ahead. Me escuchan. Buenos días y buenas tardes a todos y todas. Sí, se escucha, Eliseo. Bueno, eh, yo trabajo en la Fundación Proimpa. Mi nombre es Eliseo Mamani. Y bueno, eh, respecto a los comentarios de qué tipo de investigación están haciendo los redes de agricultores e investigadores, es que mi experiencia en los Andes es que es muy parecido al de, de África en cuanto al enfoque que se está implementando de redes de agricultores e investigadores. Bueno, eh, el enfoque va llevando que eh, los investigadores vayan conjuntamente haciendo investigación con los agricultores in situ para poder encontrar alternativas tecnológicas y prácticas agroecológicas para encontrar... Eh, estas alternativas puedan responder a sus necesidades. ¿no? La diferencia es que en los Andes en especial hay diferentes contextos, eh, hay contextos biofísicos y sociales son bien marcados, pero en ese contexto se ajusta para que pueda ser, eh, la investigación se pueda llevar adelante y pueda existir una co-creación conjunta y útil y los resultados puedan ser eh, eh, apropiados por los agricultores. En cuanto al segundo video, por ejemplo, del diseño de experimentos, es muy importante planear con los agricultores la, la investigación. Y lo propio en el, en el contexto de los Andes, existe bastante diferencia en lo biofísico porque vivimos en montañas y, y también entre las culturas, son varias culturas que se encuentran, entonces hay mucha diferencia social. Entonces, en el diseño es fundamental identificar problemas y también oportunidades, ¿no? Y es lo que ven también algunos, qué oportunidades hay. Y luego se planea, pues, con, con ellos es cómo, cuándo y dónde investigar. Y esta investigación no termina. Eh, vemos que, pues, eh, en el espacio uno, ese es el dónde, dónde investigar, porque hay una marcada diferencia. Y en el tiempo, eh, cada un año a la otra año no es eh, igual, por eso es que es muy importante ver que los agricultores eh, puedan investigar de un año a año y así se está haciendo. Y en el diseño las herramientas de recoger los datos también son muy importantes y procesarlos y analizarlos con ellos para ver eh, qué lecciones se aprenden y qué se implementa y qué no se implementan. ¿no? Entonces, la investigación con los agricultores es eh, muy importante y tenemos eh, en este enfoque similitud con lo que se ha presentado en los videos. Gracias. Ok, great. That's really, really interesting. So, we'll, I, I don't think that uh, Swamba is back online. I can't see him online. So, we'll move right on to the second pair of videos. And that uh, third video is going to be about using data. So my name is Nora Asio Ebukalim. I am working with a, a FRN program in Uganda. We are working with our community and trying more so to work on uh, issues around the diseases that have affected cassava in the region. So my name is Frank Chua. Um, I work with the Longo Investor of Agriculture and Natural Resources. Uh, I'm also uh, a member of a uh, CCRP project conducted at Rwanda. So we are working with the Maize Lake Investment Project, where uh, the objective is to scale up um, soil health innovations through farm and research networks. When we are designing, we discuss with them on what indicators 
they would want to observe in the experimental plot. So the farmers know beforehand what indicators they, they, they will need. And usually we go for those indicators that make sense to them. Uh, uh, the ones that will help them to make good observations and make uh, conclusions about their experimental plot. People have to learn uh, how the disease has affected the, the, the demonstration. So we pick data and the data we mainly pick is uh, how many plants are affected in that garden at that time? Is it affecting the hollow garden or it is a few plants? So we collect data. That's how we are learning. Over the years, we see the interest of the farmers demanding for them to take charge of some of this data collection process. That change in attitude that they start to realizing that they need records for them to make judgments on the option they're evaluating, they start demanding for the recording information. Actually, they complain if you don't think they're not good. We feel that the data is a silent sort of a key that would show us that uh, this should have been happening, not this. Uh, the reasons why these results are like this are because uh, this one was not done the right way. The data, for example, we have received from through, through COBO, we will we'll be able to analyze it um, and the, summarize it on the, on the posters, which we will take to discuss with the farmers. But the farmers themselves in their groups also uh, use their inform that information. The farmers bring present their data uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a group from that village. Say, so, okay, for us, the plots, that, uh, this is how the plots perform. Then uh, that information is presented from different groups. And then uh, us from uh, Luana, we come up with the whole picture of the whole uh, EPA with a different, so on average, this is how things have come out. And then uh, we use that information, not necessarily to say that's what it is, but we use that information to incite a dialogue. All right. Well, lots there about data. Um, but before we get any comments on those, we'll have video number four, which is on the importance of farmer engagement. Oh, <laughs> Uh, my name is Daniel Nyambo. I'm the PI for the FRN NGO project. When it comes to the FRN, we are the pioneers of FRN, I would say, because uh, from the start of uh, 2015, actually, I came to I am working with a uh, uh, FRN program in Uganda. Pikwi is as old as uh, from 1993. That's when we founded the organization. It's really a big organization and it's one of the oldest in the region. Farmers are now beginning to appreciate and work with, are ready to work with the researchers more than ever before. And this is one aspect that uh, I think is, uh, is really key. Farmers are actually trying, uh, are actually getting now to, to, to understand the, the researchers, what they, did, they, what they were doing, which they did not understand previously. Because uh, previously, they were trying to, they, they were being used just to maybe collect information and then at last they bring the results, which of course might not work for them. The most biggest characteristic uh, when we do our research with the, uh, the CCRP program is farmers are involved from stage one. And that stage one is actually identifying these problems. It means when the problems are identified with us together as farmers, it becomes our problem. We own it. 
That means that uh, we can also actually go ahead uh, to say that if we are to solve this problem, we can suggest solutions. And uh, it helps us to learn what research wants to do that, so that we can also follow up with uh, actually the results in the end. When you get farmers involved in, uh, in, 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 in the yeah, such yeah. kind of initiative of farmer research network, I think then like they are Mila. able to actually minimize this, uh, th this uh, problem of uh, maybe blanket prescription of, uh, of, 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 of technologies. We find that the, the, the final products are much more appreciated. Once we, we, we get the farmers during the design, design stage, they normally say, no, let's, let's change this to this because this will not work. Uh, you may need to go further, maybe in terms of during the design to look at uh, aspects that may be critical to the farmer, but not visible to you. The farmers actually minus even the knowledge of the management, they started visiting one another's farm. Then they, they, they came back and said, you know, the very thing that happened in my garden is also in the other garden. And the very problem we had in this side of the, the place is also happening to us. So what can we do? It looks like this problem has spread across all people's gardens. So when they came back and we had a meeting and they brought such issues into the meeting, we had to begin discussing about it. Okay, well, that was the second pair of videos and they were packed full of, of really interesting comments. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll hear from the commentators who are prepared uh, to comment on these two. And then because Swamba has now managed to get back online, we'll go back to hear uh, Swamba's comments that got cut off after the first two videos. So if Hure Bukhari is online, please open your microphone and give us your thoughts. Donc, bonjour tout le monde. Je me présente Hure Bukhari, Inyo Hareben, Tiera, Warmonven. Donc, je suis là pour répondre, pour participer à aux questions des films. Donc, j'ai mes camarades avec moi. Il y a Hajo de Falwell, Bukari Harunda de Tera, Yakuba de Falwell qui sont avec moi. Donc, moi, le film, c'est un film du, le film auquel je vais faire mon commentaire, c'est par rapport au film du, du Kenya, c'est d'Ouganda, qui parle de l'importance et l'engagement de l'engagement des agriculteurs. Donc, quel que soit les la recherche, quand euh, le film nous parle que, quelle que soit la euh, la, les chercheurs, quand les, les, pays, euh, les, les agriculteurs ne sont pas engagés, donc euh, ils n'aboutiront pas à un bon résultat de tous les côtés, et les agriculteurs et les, et les chercheurs. Donc euh, ici, quand on regarde les films, comme euh, les paysans euh, ont pris leur engagement, de participer. Donc, euh, ils ont identifié et les problèmes sont identifiés avec eux. Ils ont même, euh, avant même de commencer, ils ont visité un jardin pour, euh, pour rencontrer et ils ont rencontré les mêmes problèmes que, euh, que eux. Donc, euh, vraiment, ça montre que si on n'est pas engagé dans une activité, ça ne marche pas. Donc, il faut que le paysan soit engagé. Donc, euh, Maintenant, euh, le constat moi, que j'ai fait sur ce film, euh, donc euh, la méthode n'est pas participative. On entend dire les paysans seulement, mais on, euh, ce n'est pas participatif parce qu'il faut, il faut, il faut montrer les paysans là où ils sont là avec euh, leurs témoignages donc, dans le film. Donc ça, ça n'a pas été fait. Les paysans ne sont pas du tout... Et, et des, des, des chercheurs ou des chefs de projet qu'on n'entend on entend pas la voix des paysans et on ne voit pas les activités des, des paysans dans le film. Donc, c'est le commentaire seulement et, qui, et, que les deux personnages du film, puisque le film, c'est deux personnages seulement. Hein. 
Donc, c'est leur voix seulement qu'on attend. Il y a le genre, oui, c'est le genre, mais le film, selon moi, ça ne, ça ne me répond pas du tout. Bien que je les remercie, puisque le thème est très intéressant eh, pour moi et eh, pour les autres, mais eh, ils n'ont pas fait participer le monde paysan. Et que c'est aujourd'hui à eux de participer, puisque le film même s'est dédié aux paysans et non, et non les, les chefs de projet et, et autres. Donc vraiment, moi, voilà ce que mon appréciation que j'ai fait par rapport au film. Je vous remercie. So thank you very much, Bukhari. Very, very powerful and pertinent comments there. Uh, and now Eliseo and Edwin are both going to comment on those two uh, videos. My name is Daniel Nyambo. I'm no. the PI for the uh, uh, FRN NGO. Uh, Carlos, we're, we're playing a video. When it comes to the be. FRN, mm -hmm. we are the pioneers. So, sorry, yeah, we're going back to, yeah. Eliseo, uh, short comment, and then we hand over Gracias. to Edwin. Mm -hmm. Eh, gracias. Bueno, mi, mi comentario va relacionado en cuanto a, a los datos que se generan de las investigaciones. Bueno, en todas las investigaciones, así, así como se ha mostrado en los videos, eh, hay muchos datos que se van generando con los agricultores. Eh, en, en, en los Andes, los agricultores desde muchos años han ido haciendo investigación pero ellos lo hacían de manera de observación y no, no registraban. Entonces nuestra experiencia de ahora de hacer investigación con, la, con los agricultores se ha visto de que podamos registrar uno los datos, el segundo es que ellos ten, manejaban más datos eh, cualitativos y ahora nosotros eh, les propusimos que podamos eh, que puedan registrar datos también cuantitativos para poder compararlos, hacer análisis. Entonces, producto de una negociación, se ha hecho que ellos van a registrar ambos datos, ¿no? Cualitativos y cuantitativos. Y en estas investigaciones se han, eh, se han definido qué, qué variables investigar. muchos datos que se pueden registrar, pero el tiempo de los productores también es muy importante ver. Y los más importantes se han definido en las investigaciones que hemos llevado a cabo. Y para que puedan eh, registrar de manera sencilla los datos, se han hecho herramientas como tarjetas de evaluación o cuadernillos para que puedan ellos empezar a registrar desde el inicio hasta el final. ¿no? Porque eh, aquí la diferencia es que ellos son los que registran eh, los datos y conforme a la investigación, al tipo de investigación que van realizando. Puede ser desde la siembra hasta la post cosecha. Pero antes de que ellos terminen de registrar, ya comparten también los resultados en función a los datos, ¿no? Porque ellos tienen parcelas y van comparando ya. Y finalmente vimos de que es, es importante hacer una sistematización de datos también con ellos mismos y lo hicimos de esa forma para un poco uniformizar porque ellos miden algunas cosas eh, como ser el peso en arrobas, libras, pero para poder analizarlos es necesario sistematizarlos y lo hicimos con ellos, no simplemente nosotros agarrando los datos y analizar, sino que eh, participan ellos. Y en el, en el análisis es que ellos eh, deben participar y así lo han hecho en los Andes para que ellos puedan ir viendo cada uno uh, de los resultados y en preferencias. Y finalmente vimos de que salieron diferentes resultados en función al análisis de datos. A algunos eh, salen, por ejemplo, variedades de ciclo corto que tienen poco rendimiento, pero le es importante porque es de ciclo corto y no tanto el rendimiento. Hombre, mujer también difieren. Algunas mujeres prefieren de variedades que son aptas para alimentos, por ejemplo. En cambio, los hombres, variedades de alto rendimiento y orientado al mercado. Entonces, hay una diversidad eh, que nos da los datos, ¿no? Entonces, todo eso es trabajar eh, y se está trabajando de manera participativa con los agricultores. Es lo que puedo comentar. Gracias. Ok. Ok. Thanks very much, Eliseo. Uh, is, is Edwin there who had a comment about uh, the fourth video? Sí. Eh, muy buenos días. Muy buenas tardes a todos y todas. 
Eh, gracias por la oportunidad de compartir nuestras experiencias desde la Universidad Mayor de San Andrés, aquí en Bolivia, La Paz. Eh, ya creo que hemos entendido que nuestros hermanos productores eh, tienen diferentes contextos, desde el sentido que del video 4, donde se ve la importancia de participación de los productores, es importante resaltar que nosotros, y creo que la red de agricultores, investigadores de las diferentes instituciones dentro de Bolivia, hemos considerado mucho lo que es la experiencia de nuestros hermanos productores, porque ellos bajo su contexto han hecho investigaciones y lo único que estamos haciendo como instituciones es fortalecer estas capacidades apoyando con algunas herramientas, ¿no? Bajo su entender, porque muchos de nuestros productores, principalmente hermanas o mujeres, no han llegado a terminar incluso la secundaria, solamente a primaria, y a veces por las condiciones sociales ellos no han llegado incluso a entrar a la escuela. Entre los varones han tenido mayores ventajas porque leen, escriben, entienden los números, los valores que hay que levantar cuando hacemos registro de las, de los, de las investigaciones. Es en ese sentido que al hacer una planificación es importante que los hermanos productores consensúen el problema principal y entre todos deciden cuál va a ser la metodología de la investigación. A partir de esta investigación se generan también qué herramientas vamos a usar, considerando su tiempo de ellos, considerando también las limitaciones que puedan tener, porque a nivel de recursos de su región uh, en el altiplano boliviano principalmente son sometidos a estreses climáticos, también tienen sus recursos como materia orgánica limitada, no mucho ganado, y que tienen que hacer mejor uso de estos tipos de, de recursos, ¿no? Por otra parte, existe un compromiso de nuestros hermanos productores porque el, por la necesidad de entender por qué está ocurriendo estos problemas y la solución que se da. Eh, no todos son iguales, pero sí hay grupos de productores que nosotros les llamamos investigadores que son parte de nosotros y están comprometidos a llevar adelante el trabajo. Y como ya dijeron la hermana Nora, que es una productora de allí de, de África, lo que realmente vale la pena se divulga al resto de los productores para que haya esa confianza de que ellos lo han realizado y esos resultados realmente van a beneficiar no solo a los que están cercanos, sino a otros contextos de productores. ¿no? Esas serían mis opiniones respecto al video 4. Gracias. Ok, bueno, well, gracias. So we'll just we'll just go back to to Swamba to uh, you have two minutes to to just finish your comments about the first two visit uh, videos. If you're still okay, here, merci yes. Uh, go ahead. Désolé, désolé, merci pour la seconde chance. Alors je disais que uh, les parties de ressemblance. Je vais aller maintenant pour les deux vidéos en même temps. Je vais plus faire par vidéo. Alors uh, la, le, dans les deux cas, la recherche cherche à résoudre les problèmes des paysans. C'est ce qui est notre cas aussi. La recherche est itérative, ce qui est notre cas. Et les gens se préoccupent sur la documentation et la collecte de données. Et il y a une euh, importance à, à adapter la recherche aux besoins et au contexte spécifique des paysans. Ce qui n'est pas clair à mon esprit, c'est le niveau de participation et de considération des paysans dans le processus. On a dit qu'ils ont participé, mais on voit plus tard qu'il faut qu'ils insistent pour qu'on prenne en compte leur semence locale. J'ai vu aussi que euh, euh, il semble qu'au départ, les chercheurs ne se sont pas suffisamment intéressés aux variétés locales. Et donc, euh, comme je le disais, les paysans ont dû insister. Pour moi, si on tient compte du contexte local, c'est se poser les questions de ce qui est là, faire les analyses et se baser sur ça pour avancer. Et ce que je n'ai pas perçu du tout, c'est bien sûr la description du rôle des paysans dans, en dehors du fait qu'on dit euh, rapidement qu'ils ont participé à l'ensemble du processus. Et mais de façon spécifique, c'est quoi Et la promotion du leadership local, 
à travers le renforcement des capacités euh, des communautés à poursuivre le travail après le projet. Et je n'ai pas vu aussi euh, le partage d'expériences avec d'autres du milieu concerné par la problématique. Donc, c'est à l'intérieur du projet surtout, mais on n'évoque pas les autres acteurs dans le cadre de la chaîne de valeur où, en tout cas, d'autres acteurs seraient intéressés à ce qu'ils font. Et enfin, je n'ai pas vu des dispositifs de mise à l'échelle de ce qui est fait sur le terrain. Voilà, comme je suis en train de chercher à me racheter, je vais m'arrêter là. Et merci encore pour votre compréhension. OK, thanks very much. Some very insightful comments there. So we'll now move to the last pair of videos. Um, number five, which is on networking and information sharing. Okay, I'm Justin Nganga. I work for an organization called the Recorder, and we are working in one of the um, regions in Tanzania, which is in the central part, which is called Sigida. We are working, we, we call it the Pigeon PFLN Sigida. Uh, my name is Daniel Nyambok. I'm the PI for the FRN NGO project. Uh, which covers pro, uh, around six uh, administrative, uh, county administrative units uh, in the greater Western Kenya region. Because the farmers, farmers meet in the group plot for learning, we usually encourage them to share what, what their experiences from their, their farm. So they start discussing that, okay, my maize, maybe is better than this. So they ask each other, okay, what did you do? And the farmers share that I did this. Maybe on my farm, I also added some ashes because, um, because of ABC. So you find that they are discussing and, and bringing out their experiences. And that's what we encourage them to do. So our farmers are actually clustered and we work with groups of farmers from those clusters. And these clusters uh, actually represent different regions within our Bay with the different uh, agroecological, social, uh, so social dynamics, different things. They were able to meet uh, periodically, maybe monthly or at the end of trial, trial and try to, 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 to discuss the results that they were coming out from their trial. Um, when we are talking about networking in, between the farmers, sometimes it is very hard to, to define the networking. You may think that the network is, is here, but the network is even in another district, in another place. We were inquiring about who have you told about what you have learned. And we learned that farmers have told their relatives, even in villages which are outside their area. And so, like, we went to another village which is not in the project area, and we found that people are also growing pigeon peas. And um, it is because some of the relatives who are in the groups had already told them about it. We also organized an exchange visit uh, uh, so that farmers could share the information or share the, what was uh, happening from the trials. Farmers tend to believe their fellow farmers. And when the information is coming from those people who are actually on daily basis get engaged in those activities, they then they try to believe them and they, the rate of adoption actually, increase, uh, actually goes up higher than when it was actually introduced from an external person. Okay, and we're coming to the last one which we're going to show today. Um, this one is slightly different because it's comments on what researchers and students working with farmers in this sort of way need to understand. So 
So my name is Nora Asio Ebukalim. I come from the eastern part of Uganda and I'm also in the Teso region. And uh, I am working with a, a FRN program in Uganda. Pikwi is as old as uh, from 1993. That's when we founded the organization. I'm Samuel Gudu. I am the PI of Sogam, Kenya. And uh, I uh, run a project which is funded by the Magnets Foundation. Things are changing and uh, I supervise students now. And when it comes to data analysis, we have to sit with statisticians and look at all ways of analyzing the same data. And I think now what I see, the changes in the curriculum are, are almost mandatory and they have started changing because now we do all those uh, analysis that that are done much better than what 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 the original uh, parameters were and what we see is definitely the need to revolutionize the experimental methods designs and uh, analytical new analytical tools that uh, help us to understand the data we collect much better sometimes when they come they come with preconceived ideas so when we try to raise certain things to them they say no but i'm supposed to be doing this i'm supposed to be doing this and in the end we just leave them do their research and they go back i may say that the other thing the students should be learning about doing research is how you can engage the people you're doing research with because sometimes the biggest problem with the students they can be taught how to do research there when they come to the field sometimes they cannot apply that what they are learning it's very unfortunate that some students even do not know how to mark the gardens. And for long, we've been doing this with some researchers, and uh, we now know what it should be like. So when they come and they don't do that, we feel like we are getting a wrong thing happening around. So they should know how to engage with their community and to engage with the farmers they are going to work with. It is very important. It is the design of the curriculum that will look at what 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 can be done in the in four years and and make sure that we produce the breeders but we are also exposing them to what they're going to see in the field not just to remain in the lab they are good breeders yes but they may not be able to understand what they are breeding how will it how will it impact what is the major impact because the breeder just don't want to produce a variety only you want to see the impact of your varieties on the people once a while when they're in the field they should listen to maybe what the farmers are saying and then they can now see how best they can engage the farmers okay and we've got uh final uh no not quite final almost final comments first from uh uh yalale Traore. Ok, donc bonsoir. Euh, C'est Yalali Traoré de l'Union locale des producteurs de céréales de Jela, YLPC Jela. Donc, moi, mes commentaires par rapport aux deux vidéos. Euh, pour la première vidéo qui est les résultats et partage d'informations, ce que j'ai capté comme ressemblance, ça, c'est euh, l'échange avec euh, le producteur. Donc, du fait que vraiment, il est ressorti dans les vidéos. Et la planification participative et chez nous aussi nous on les fait donc euh, les partages d'informations c'est fait à travers les visites commentées autour des parcelles de démonstration les, les évaluations participatives aussi et ce que je n'ai pas peut-être bien capté dans leur vidéo ça c'est la participation parce que des radios et des vulgarisateur parce que c'est FRN, donc c'est un ensemble de réseaux vraiment qui constitue cet FRN. -là. Bon, on devait vraiment sentir aussi la voix des producteurs. Bon, dans la vidéo, ça, là, cela ne ressort pas. Donc, euh, la voix des producteurs, même vraiment, euh, la vidéo devait être matérialisée aussi vraiment à travers les images. 
Donc, bon, à travers la vidéo, j'ai constaté que ça, c'est une interview. Voilà. Donc, par rapport à, à la deuxième vidéo qui est euh, « Que doivent savoir les chercheurs et les étudiants ?» Donc, dans notre contexte aussi, nous travaillons avec les étudiants. Donc, ces étudiants viennent directement soit de la recherche ou bien qui sont euh, venus directement dans leur organisation comme stagiaires venant des, des écoles euh, agro-pastorales. Donc, euh, ces étudiants sont impliqués vraiment dans toutes les activités, depuis vraiment l'identification des problèmes jusqu'à la collecte d'informations et l'analyse des données. Euh, bon, moi, à ma compréhension, par rapport à la vidéo, bon, j'ai constaté que vraiment les étudiants, les objectifs vraiment du travail des étudiants ne sont pas trop, trop clairs. Donc, euh, c'est ce qui montre souvent vraiment les refus hein, d'écoute des étudiants à l'endroit des producteurs. Donc, euh, en grosso modo, ça, c'est ce que j'ai capté vraiment comme commentaire par rapport aux deux vidéos. Merci. Yeah, thank you, Lala. That was those uh, important points there. And the final one's from Edwin. Muchas gracias. Eh, tenemos que recalcar que una red de intercambio de información corresponde a la necesidad de los hermanos productores. Disculpen que siempre les digo a ellos, hermanos productores, porque ellos nos exigen a nosotros la forma de hacer la investigación, por un lado. ¿no? Eh, cuando hacemos una, una investigación, ellos mismos lo absorben a su contexto. Pero tienen otros hermanos con los que tienen contacto de otras zonas que tienen otro diferente contexto. Y lo que ellos quieren ver es cómo les va a ellos. Y la única forma es hacer este intercambio de visitar a los otros hermanos, ¿no? Y ese cambio se hace cada año. Un año se va a una zona y ellos les explican en campo cuáles son los resultados, los problemas, las necesidades con las cuales han afrontado. Incluso ellos mismos muestran que pueden mejorar a través de otros, otros experimentos que lo empiezan a implementar. Siempre dentro del marco de la metodología, la cual levanta la información para que ésta pueda ser analizada en otro momento. No olvidemos que la RAI no solo es hacer una investigación a nivel central en un grupo, sino también es compartir con otros. ¿no? Y también la RAI no tenemos que enfocarnos solamente que son los productores los que están intercambiando la información. Entre nosotros, entre los técnicos de las diferentes instituciones, también tenemos nuestra propia RAI para poder pensar entre nosotros cómo le está yendo a mi colega de la otra institución y aprender del otro colega para mí y poder implementar con los, hermanos, con los productores. Entonces, en ese sentido que... Este proceso de intercambio también, lastimosamente por la pandemia y problemas sociales que hemos tenido políticos aquí en Bolivia, nos ha obligado a que podamos mejorar el sistema a través de las redes sociales, teniendo entre eh, productores el WhatsApp, el Facebook, que han empezado a incorporar dentro de su sistema para tener este intercambio de información, mostrar a través de fotos cómo le está yendo o una helada quemó su cultivo o la granizada eliminó su cultivo y luego ver cómo se van a levantar o sembrar en otras partes. ¿no? Eso es lo que podrías rescatar del video número 5 y en el video número 6 es verdad, se repite igual que en todo el mundo que el contexto y el marco académico con el cual van formando a los jóvenes estudiantes, y no solo ellos, sino también los mismos docentes que no quieren algunos cambiar la idea de que se pueda hacer investigación bajo un, un, una rigurosa metodología estadística, no siempre tiene que ser en un lugar plano, bien marcado se puede hacer ese mismo, esa misma investigación de un lugar en diferentes zonas, en diferentes contextos, y luego unirlas, y también se puede hacer ese análisis estadístico. ¿no? Entonces, esto permite que los hermanos productores traigan su experiencia a diferentes lugares y lo podamos discutir y ver la mejor opción que resultó para tener este resultado. Respetando también de que 
ellos tienen su forma de trabajo, ya es con los medios que tienen y principalmente aquí en el altiplano que han logrado mejorar mucho de la biodiversidad, mantener la biodiversidad para poder enfrentarse a eventos extremos. Y queda algo que creo que para todos sería una gran pregunta, que nosotros podemos frenar las iniciativas de investigación de los mismos productores, porque a veces queremos enmarcarnos también en una investigación con agricultores, pero hay otros que quieren romper esa brecha e incluso se ponen a cambiar de cultivo, no mantenerlo. Entonces eso creo que queda en el en una pregunta para todos ¿no? y todas. Muchas gracias. Ok, thank you, Edwin. Now, I've, I've invited one more person to make a comment, and that is John Ogiem. I hope he's online. Um, I recorded a, a long and very interesting interview with John, but for technical reasons, the, the quality wasn't good enough to turn into a video. So I thought it was only fair to allow him to make a just a minute or two's comment uh, now, if he wants to. John. Thank you, Rick. I hope uh, you can hear me well. We can, yes. Okay, because of time, I just wanted to make a few comments. Some of them are uh, uh, as a result of what you've heard, but some are just my own ideas, my experience with FRN work in Western Kenya. First, I thought that uh, FRN within our context in Kenya where uh, national extension has become more or less uh, demand driven and not so effective, I thought FRN was a beautiful way of uh, <clears throat> conducting extension, doing research and also doing extension at the same time because you reach so many farmers and that is a good thing. So I think it is very effective in that way. Another point I wanted to make was about uh, capacity building. I think okay. FRN has enabled us to really build capacity of many farmers very quickly, and I think it has been effective. I think it has been so effective that uh, some farmers have emerged as leaders and started organizing their members in this way or that way, to the extent that some intermediaries are now starting to fail to feel threatened maybe with redundancy, but I don't think that should be a worry. I think it should be welcomed. And uh, another thing, okay, in my view, networking has not been very effective. I think we have done a lot of capacity building and research, but networking in the sense that this former research network is, you know, communicating and sharing with another former research uh, somewhere else that has not been very effective. And oh, I think it, requires, my boy. it requires um, it to be done because it is a way of scaling out rapidly. And I think for that, that technology must be applied in our groups. We have tried to give them uh, a mobile phone so that they can take videos and exchange ideas with other farmers and in other networks. And recently I saw a video where farmers were describing what has worked for them and what has not worked. And I thought it was a very effective way of exchanging information with other networks. Uh, quickly to students, I think uh, what I said in the interview that I had with you was that uh, our students need to learn from the past because a lot of students in universities today they have not seen how things were working, the traditional agricultural uh, production, how it was organized and how it was conducted because they grew up in the age where everything was monoculture and they eat, but no agroecology in that. So it is good to hear Professor Gudu talking of curriculum change, that is uh, very positive. But students also need to learn from that past so that they can know where we went wrong and start learning how to make things work applying principles of agro, agroecology. And if that is done within an FRN approach, I think we can go very far. The last thing I wanted to talk about was uh, that FRNs has allowed us to, to have some co-creation. And I think this has helped farmers to understand research and to have ownership 
and it has also helped us to relate more with farmers and, and share knowledge almost as equal partners. So I think as farmers build capacity and co-creation happens, I think research will be more meaningful and uh, farmers can you know, do the kind of research that they want to do and answer the questions that are important to them, supported by researchers. So I think that is all I wanted to, to add to the rich conversation that has taken place in terms of the videos. Well, thank you for that, John. That was a very nice way of, of summing up some of the important points. Carlos, can you show the last slide, please? Certainly. Because this is the slide where we just say thank you to everybody. I, th I thought it went, it went really well. I was worried about managing this sequence and times and everybody stuck to time and everybody had interesting things to say. So thank you to all those people who appeared in the videos. Thank you to all those people who commented. Thank you to Emily who produced the videos. She's, she, you didn't see her today, but she put a lot of work into editing those. Thank you to the translators who made it all possible. I should say that these videos will appear on our YouTube channel as, as, as long as where everything else from this uh, convening will appear. They will appear, appear on the Research Method Support uh, YouTube channel, and there are more of them. We could only look at six out of those which we, we made from this set of interviews. There are more, and uh, so have a look at them. And we'll find a way of trying to address the, the comments of questions that have come up in the chat. So thank you to everybody, and there we are finishing a little late, but I think it was worthwhile.